Hello and welcome to the Anoka County Eagle. I'm your host, Ted Butler. This is the time of year when cities all over Anoka County start preparing their budgets for the next, next fiscal year. 2009 has been especially challenging for cities to adjust to significant losses in state revenue. We'll be joined by one prominent local mayor to, to discuss that process later in the show. But first, it's back to school time across the county. And along with helping uh, kids with homework, parents are also being asked to help foot the bill. That's right, it's levy season in school districts around the area, including right here in Anoka Hennepin Schools. We're joined now by Jackson Middle School math teacher and Vice President of Edu uh, Education Minnesota here in the Anoka Hennepin School District, Julie Blaha. Julie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, as I mentioned, we have a, a levy coming up here, a levy referendum coming up here in the Anoka, Anoka Hennepin School District in November. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some background on what that levy is and why it's important that it passes this fall? Oh, sure. Uh, in 1999, voters approved an operating levy to help uh, the district keep up with basic necessities after we'd opened a new school. Now, the money doesn't go specifically to any school. It goes to help the entire district's budget. And it funds very basic things, basic school, school operating funds, teachers, uh, class size, all of those very basic everyday parts of educating a child. Uh, this, um, if, this, if this levy passes, people won't see a big difference in their taxes. It is what we already have. This is just a renewal plus inflation. So uh, to make sure our buying power doesn't dwindle, they'll uh, see about an extra $2 a month on an average homes um, uh, tax bill. For if it fails, however, we'll see big differences. We'll need to cut $8 million from our budget, which would be significant class size increases, significant teacher cuts. It really would be a, a very difficult situation for an already cash draft district. So that's a significant point then, that this is a, a renewal of an mm -hmm. existing levy plus a little bit for inflation, not necessarily new funding, because I know sometimes the, the verbiage that shows up on the ballot it makes it look right. like it's a lot of new money, but, but in many cases it's a renewal. Oh, exactly. This is what we have now. You know, and one of the things that we considered when looking at this levy was, well, we are short of cash. We, st we do have a budget shortfall, but uh, this really didn't seem like the right time to be going for additional money. We thought, you know, with the times that they are, let's stay where we are, let's not go backward but this was not the best time for us to seek new money. So again, this is just going to be what we already have. We just want to continue what we already have. Okay. Now, I, I know from talking to a number of residents, friends and family in the area who um, feel that oftentimes school districts, whether in Okahannepin or other districts, seem to be coming back year after year for an endless stream of levies. Can you give us some background and insight into why that seems to be the case to a lot of residents? Well, simply put, it's inadequate funding from the state. That's all there is to it. Uh, state funding has lagged behind inflation for over a decade. So over time, costs have risen, costs have risen, but our funding hasn't kept pace. So as a result, if we want to keep providing the same quality of education, and in fact, we're being asked to meet higher and higher standards all the time, uh, our funding needs to keep pace with that. So years of what seems like flat funding, which is actually a cut when you consider inflation. And this year in particular, when uh, the governor balanced his budget by shifting payments out, they say, well, you'll still, get your, you'll still get your funding. You just won't get it now when you actually have to pay your bills. So we're all taking out short-term loans, and that interest on those short-term loans is also contributing to budget, budget problems for districts. Sure. Uh, another thing residents have been hearing about here late in the summer and, and early this fall uh, our school closings in Anoka mm -hmm. Hennepin School District, something we're not used to hearing a lot about in this area. Can you give us some background and insight into, into why that's being discussed at this point? Oh yeah, this is very new for Anoka Hennepin. We haven't closed schools. I don't think we've ever closed a school in the district's history, but we have declining enrollment. We simply have fewer students. And um, we've also had to make some significant budget cuts last year that included cutting about 100 teachers. And when you cut teachers and when your school district shrinks, you have open classrooms. And in tough financial times, it just isn't prudent to keep an empty building open. Uh, and so as these buildings uh, shrink and class sizes open up, classrooms open up, we need to close schools to be efficient. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's really hard. This is, you know, one of my schools, I went to Anoka Hennepin schools, might be slated for closure. So it is, it is just a heartbreaking thing to do, but it's really the only fiscally responsible thing that we can do. Okay, sure. 
Uh, and maybe a, uh, an important point there about not having closed schools in the past, the North Metro area has obviously been growing mm -hmm. in population very significantly over the last 10, 20, 30 years. So that's probably the, the primary reason why we haven't closed schools in the oh, past. Oh, exactly. Right? We've been building, we've been expanding, and we just have turned that corner, and now we're starting to decline. So it's that population shift that is the, the main reason for closing schools. And also past budget cuts. If I have a larger class, well, there needs to be fewer teachers. That opens up classrooms, and that also... Um, can lead to closing schools earlier than we normally would. Okay. Um, speaking of those, stool of those school closings, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, should parents be considering that the, that the levy and the school closings are connected to each other necessarily, or, or is there some relationship between the two? Well, you know, indirectly, only indirectly. Um, if the levy passes, we, we won't be changing what we're doing with our school closures. If the levy fails, though, we may have to close schools earlier than we normally would. If the levy fails, we have to raise class sizes. We simply have to cut staff. And that means more students in my class, less individual time that I can take with my students. And uh, again, when you cut those teachers, the space is open. And again, you just can't justify in tough times keeping an uh, empty building open. So it's time to, we would may have to cut um, close schools earlier than we normally would if the levy were to fail. Okay. Um, now, I I when we talk about costs for schools, uh, they face mm -hmm. a somewhat different uh, mix of costs than, than other areas because they're so people-centric. Mm -hmm. um, in, in fact, uh, costs have risen for schools substantially over the last decade, yet state funding, as you mentioned, hasn't kept up. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a, a recent study by Minnesota 2020 that showed that the amount of property tax levy necessary to keep, uh, keep pace with funding demands for schools, mm -hmm. the property tax levies will have nearly tripled over a period of eight years in districts across the state, not necessarily in Anoka Hennepin. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some insight as to, to what those costs are that drive, drive increases in, in the needs for school funding and, and how, how those are being addressed? Well, sure, we're all about people. So the, one of the biggest cost drivers in our district is health insurance. You know, if you want to make sure you provide fair health insurance for your, for your employees, which is pretty key in keeping quality people, uh, it, those prices have just risen well up, um, outside the pace of regular inflation. And when you have most of what we do has to be with, a, with another person, that's a huge cost driver for us. If, if we can't get a better handle on health care uh, in the state, in the country, this is going to continue to be a problem. Uh, we're actually at the point where there are actually some uh, groups of teachers in the state that don't get health insurance. We actually have teachers who've had to, their district had to give up health insurance altogether and they have to go out and try to find it on their own. It's gotten, and I never thought that would happen as a teacher. You know, one of the reasons I went into teaching, I knew it wouldn't make a lot of money, but you know, I thought that you know, the benefits would be good and of course the job's the best job in the world. But now as we're eating into, as, as healthcare costs going, go up, I don't even know if I can count on that long term. So that has to change. Fuel costs are an issue. If we're gonna get the kids to the building, um, we can't have um, a little kindergartner walking four miles to school. So we have significant busing costs. I um, should say the number of schools to a minimum, you have to bus students further and further. Fuel costs really impact that. Um, but ultimately the biggest cost driver and the biggest reasons to shift from state funding to levies is that we simply haven't gotten fair funding from the state. If the state doesn't keep up their end of the bargain, we have to go to the, director, the voters directly. All right, great, thank you very much. Now, uh, just so the public knows, I believe that there are a couple of information sessions coming up on both the school closings and on the levy in the coming weeks. And those dates and times and locations can be found at the Anoka Hennepin School District website, which is anoka.k12.mn.us. Oh, exactly. Those are the best way to communicate directly with your school board member, have your voice heard, and the best way to hear what your neighbors are talking about, too. I learned a lot at those meetings. All right. Great. Thank you very much for joining us, Julie. Thank you for having me. Oh, 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 oh,